Brilliant, well, thank you very much. Although I must confess, technically I'm a nerd. The mic talking about a geek to start with, the fact that I know the difference between a geek and a nerd is very, very telling. <laughs> Geeks are interested in, in uh, gadgets and things. Nerds are interested in concepts. And that was from a text mining example that I read. So it's the, the, the nerdiness runs deep within this one. Uh, so I'm the co-founder of, of Dot Loves Data. I look after the analytics data and technology teams. Now we are a data-driven story company. Now when I say storytelling, it's non-fiction. We like to have everything fact-based. Uh, it's a blend of, as mentioned before, uh, of analytics, advertising, and business leadership. So we're really trying to create a real blend of talented individuals that can bring a story to life to create compelling, shareable, and actionable insights, and really encouraging people to be bold about what can be done with data, how to make decisions, and actually be confident and bold in doing something with that. So our purpose is to make the power of data available to all, so to help customers really drive value from within their own organisations. And our philosophy is simple, smart, and beautiful. Clearly I'm not beautiful. Um, but be able to create compelling images that people want to share can really draw people in, suck them right into the data, and if they're wanting to share it, then that can lead to ongoing conversations about what does it mean, how can we use this, and using that to create and define strategies to improve people's lives, to make things better in the world around us, or for some people, to make more money. And that takes us into a, if we think about a couple of examples that I'll take you through now with DOT. So a data-driven business needs data, straight away. So one of the examples we'll go through now is open source data that we extract from the, from the web, looking at mainstream media content. Both the articles and the comments written around uh, that information, and we've tracked that in this nice little graph that we've got up on the board there. So you, can everyone see it all right? There's some grey dots, don't worry about those. The green line is the one that we're after. Now this is just track, tracking the mood of the nation over the last uh, six to nine months. Now the first spike, just to give you a bit of perspective there, that first real bump there, that's the Rugby World Cup. We were happy. The second spike, it's Christmas. So I was a bit of a debate going into Christmas. Would Christmas be bigger than a Rugby World Cup? And so I have to, obviously you have to put the lens of a child on that because it turns out Christmas is bigger. And then what's interesting if you go through and look at key, key dates and how that impacts upon the, on the mood collectively of the nation, turns out we're not big fans of Mondays. Although that said, the, the, the Monday after we beat South Africa in the Rugby World Cup, we were happy. Roll forward a week, we beat Australia, we were happy. Uh, we wind forward to the 11th of January, Monday. Worst Monday for a long time. First day back. The second worst Monday was the 18th. So you can start to see a bit of a, a, bit of a pattern coming through there. So the question is, well, how do you actually, how can you potentially use this? So we're looking to try and build this into a, cash, a crash preventer, understand how it's going to impact upon people's lives out in the road, uh, understanding media releases, when's the time to pump out good news. So there's a lot of different applications you can use with that. The next example I want to take us through is to, to be blunt, this is a piece of work we pulled together in about uh, an hour and a half, two hours. My father-in-law came to me and said, look, I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get some free CDs out of an organisation from a program I'm running, and I need to show that the area that I'm dealing with, they're not that well off. Now, there's a lot of very, very rich information out there that we can tap into, and so making use of the census information and the deprivation index, the deprivation index is an absolutely fantastic statistic. They just pulled together a compelling story that, that he could use to get some free CDs. Uh, what we then did, so he, got, he got his free CD, so he was, he was happy. Um, my, my, my dad, uh, so he works, um, or he's a councillor in, in Marston District Council, and so I flicked it on to him. We printed it up a bit first. And so then he passed it on to one of his colleagues, and they used that to source uh, government funding, and they were successful in that application. And then we passed it on to another, another colleague in Master, and they used it to get further funding with that. So they're actually able to really drive action out of that community and really help them. But obviously you then start thinking about the challenges of some of these data sources. So the deprivation index and the census information obviously only rolls around uh, every five years. So we're working with third party suppliers to see if we can get dynamic data that we can use to map to some of these behaviours 
So what it means is if this government funding is going into some of these initiatives, we can actually track the return on investment pretty quickly and be bold in the action that, that people are taking and actually measure and quantify the benefit. So one of the, the, the big pieces to come out of the, uh, that piece of work we just showed in that graph before was the Connecting Communities Organisation in, in Marston. They got a government grant for $240,000. Now to them, that's a, that's a, a big chunk of, of cash. And so when they, their first meeting, one of the, the key things they talked about, what do, you, what, do you, what do you actually need? And the first, first thing they asked for is, we've got a community house, we'd actually like some heating for here. So it's understanding the needs and the drivers of these organisations to really generate, to generate value. The key thing there is actually be able to be bold in, in making a statement. If you think about it, you're telling a story, you actually need to actually take a perspective. And sometimes that's scary when you actually have to put forward a perspective. Uh, if it's evidence-backed, and that's where data becomes so very, very powerful, you can actually be quite safe in making that claim, but still, you need to be bold, be prepared to take action, but then the, the key thing is backing up, backing up those actions with data to understand and measure the impact of what you've done and the interventions you've taken care of. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to come and speak. Thanks.